Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and this is part three of a series of video on time frequency analysis of EEG time series. This part is about wavelet transforms. First, let's talk about the Eisenberg's uncertainty principle. The principle states that there is a trade-off between time and frequency resolution. There is a lower bound to the product of delta frequency times delta times, and it is the inverse of 4 pi. Delta F is the difference between two successive frequencies, so it's the frequency resolution, and delta T is the difference between successive time samples, so it's the time resolution. For example, if delta frequencies is 1 hertz, so 1 hertz resolution, the minimum time resolution is 80 milliseconds. If you multiply 1 hertz by 0 0.08 seconds, you're just above the inverse of 4 pi. With 2 Hz resolution, the minimum time resolution is 40 milliseconds, etc. Why is this important for EEG? Well, EEG may contain short bursts at high frequency, for which we need high time resolution, here uh, at gamma, for example. And in EEG, there is also longer oscillation at low frequencies, for, we, for which we need relatively high frequency resolution, here at theta, for example. The problem is that the Fourier transform has a constant time resolution at all frequencies that depends on the size of the signal or time window. Can we adapt time frequency resolution for individual frequencies to improve spectral estimation? Yes, we can. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we can compute the Fourier transform by convolving the signal with a complex sinusoid at some frequencies of interest. We can taper our sinusoid, for example, with a Gaussian window as represented here, to localize our wavelets in time and reduce Gibbs rippling at the edges. Then at each time point, we correlate the signal with uh, this wavelet as shown here. This gives us at each time point an estimate of the spectral power in the signal at that frequency. The advantage is that we can design the wavelet at each frequency to be diffused or well localized in time to optimize the trade-off between time and frequency resolution. By convolving stretch and scaled version of what is commonly called a mother wavelet with the EEG signal, we determine the power at different times and frequencies. Here on the bottom you can see power for the 5 Hz version of the wavelet in red, for the 10 Hz version in blue, and for the 40 Hz version in green. Only the 10 Hz version shows a substantial increase in power because the EEG signal only contains oscillations at 10 Hz. Another way of representing this is using a 2D time frequency plot as shown here. Uh, note that different wavelets may be better adapted for different kinds of EEG signal. In general, in EEG, we use a Morley wavelet, which is a sinusoid times a Gaussian. However, in uh, brain-computer interface research, when researchers try to extract the most relevant EEG signal features for, features for classification purposes, it is common to use other types of wavelets, such as the one represented here. As I mentioned earlier, there is always a trade-off between time and frequency. A wavelet is a packet of energy localized in time and frequency. The width of the wavelet depends on the standard deviation of the Gaussian windowing taper for the Morley wavelets. The width determines how accurately a change in amplitude can be localized in time. Let's consider two Morley wavelets, one with a wide window on the left and one with a narrow window on the right. If we apply the wide window wavelet to a 10 Hz EEG signal containing itself 10 Hz oscillation, we will find a perfect correlation. All the peaks match up. This is true both for the wide and the narrow window wavelet. Now, if the EEG frequency is at 8.5 Hz, so slightly lower than the wavelet frequency, then the large window wavelet will indicate poor correlation at 10 Hz. This is because only the signal uh, central peak match the wavelet. By contrast, the peripheral peak are, are anti-correlated with the wavelet. So this is what we should expect. However, the small window wavelets will still be highly correlated uh, with a signal at 8.5 Hz as all the peaks almost line up. This is something that indicates poor uh, frequency resolution. Similarly, if the EEG frequency is at 11.5 Hz, so slightly higher than the wavelet frequency, then the large window wavelet will indicate a low correlation at 10 Hz, so good frequency resolution. 
However, the small window wavelet will produce high correlation against something that indicates poor frequency resolution. Thus, the wide window wavelet is better able to localize the amplitude of the signal in frequency, but less uh, able to localize the signal in time compared to the narrow window wavelet, which has the opposite properties. Let's look at how we can use the time frequency trade-off of wavelets. This represents time series with fixed time resolution and no frequency resolution. By contrast, this represents a Fourier transform with fixed frequency resolution and no time resolution. As we've seen when we compute the power spectrum, all time resolution is lost. Now this is a short time Fourier transform where we segment time in different windows. Now we can have both uh, fixed time and frequency resolution in each window. And finally, this is a wavelet transform where we can adapt the width of the wavelet so it's time resolution uh, to the frequency of interest. So it produces better time frequency resolution trade-off. You can have high frequency resolution and low time resolution at low frequencies of the EEG and low frequency uh, resolution, high time resolution at higher frequencies in the EEG. In EEG lab, we use a parameter, uh, the scale expansion factor that automatically adapts the time frequency resolution by adjusting the width of the Morley wavelet. On the left, a uh, scale version, uh, a scale expansion factor of zero is equivalent to a tapered short time for a transform. This means that the, we keep the window size and time resolution constant across all frequency. And we increase the number of cycles with frequencies. On the other extreme, on the right, a scale expansion factor of one will keep the number of cycles constant while decreasing the size of the window. Again, the first wavelet produce low time resolution and high frequency resolution for low frequencies in the EEG, and the second one, high time resolution and low frequency resolution for high frequencies in the EEG. If you consider frequencies which are a power of two, so two hertz, four hertz, eight hertz, 16 hertz, etc., and a scale expansion factor of one, you have what we call true wavelets as defined in textbooks. These are used for signal compression, or other signal processing applications such as denoising. Here our goal is visualization of EEG data, so we do not want to restrict ourselves to using frequencies which are a power of two. We might want to have linear increments in frequencies such uh, as represented here. We might also want to use different scale expansion factors with wavelets having different numbers of cycles at different frequencies. For example, with a wavelet expansion factor of 0.5, the size of the window at the highest frequency is about half the size of, within the, of the window at the lowest frequency. A value we will typically use for EEG applications is 0.8, as it provides a good time frequency trade-off for both low and high frequencies. In the EEG lab, we can also specify manually the exact number of cycle and size of window for each frequency. And I will show you how to do that in one of the following presentations. So the wavelets we use for EEG signal visualization are modified wavelets, not true wavelets used for compression and denoising. On this slide, uh, I show some plots obtained with EEG lab. Here you see how a scale expansion factor of zero produces smearing across time at all frequencies. And again, this is equivalent to performing a short time Fourier transform. And here you see a scale expansion factor of 1 when you're smearing across frequencies for all time windows. So that's uh, what we need is something in between, such as the scale expansion factor of 0 0.8, for example. Let's quickly review alternative methods for time frequency decomposition of EEG data. First, the Hilbert transform. The Hilbert transform returns phase and amplitude of a signal through time. Usually, first the signal is bandpass filtered in the frequency range of interest, for example, between 8 and 12 Hz for alpha rhythm, and then the Hilbert transform can provide amplitude and phase through time. In this plot, we start with a signal bandpass filtered in red, and then we extract amplitude and phase of the complex Hilbert estimate. The result is similar to using a windowed FFT or wavelet approach. If you're not convinced, I invite you to look at the reference on this slide. This is not available from the EGLAB graphic interface, but you can easily apply it to an EGLAB data structure by calling the MATLAB Hilbert transform function on the MATLAB command line. 
And then finally, we have the multi-taper approach. Uh, for Fourier transform, we usually apply one taper, as shown here, uh, to the signal. For example, we multiply the signal by a Gaussian taper. With the multi-taper approach, it is similar, but we apply multiple orthogonal tapers, perform FFT, compute spectrum, and then average uh, the spectra. The advantage is that we reduce variance proportionally to the number of tapers. However, we also decrease time frequency resolution proportionally to the number of tapers. So this approach is only used for high EG frequencies above 30 Hertz, where we can afford to lose uh, time resolution. If you want to use multi-taper to compute a spectrum, you can use the MATLAB PMTM function on EG lab data structures. For time frequency decompositions, you can uh, use the EGLAB timef function from the MATLAB command line. I want to thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.